Boys, welcome into another episode of the Cutting Up Podcast. I am your host, Jonas Satcher, and today we have no guest. Dalton, how do we have no guest? Well, I mean, I think technically I'm a guest again, even though I was here last week, but we're not doing a normal episode. Yes, you're going to be a mainstay now. Um, no guest, guys. However, that does not change the fact that we are still going to have an absolute banger of an episode for you guys today. So... Brief touch on why this is happening and what's happening here is this is actually something I've kind of thought about for a little while now, um, wanting to do this a little bit separate from a guest. Now, this is not something we're going to do every single week. This is not the future of the podcast. This is not something you're going to see multiple weeks in a row. We are still focused on guests. That is the main thing we're going to do here, bringing you guys some awesome people in here to give you guys some awesome insight. Um, however, this is something I kind of want to try and it could go really, really bad and we could never do this again. It's going to be a one-time thing, um, but I don't think that's going to happen. And I actually think this is something that I'm going to find a little bit enjoyable. Uh, and that's just going to be us kicking back, talking a little bit. Um, one of the things that has become, it's a pro um, as a whole is that when we shoot these episodes, some of you may have noticed we batch shoot. And so what that means is we'll shoot two or three episodes at once because First off, people have very busy schedules. Dalton, my man, he's running around town shooting videos for people, producing, editing them all the time. And so it's hard to get him in here every single week. Also, this is a lot of setup. If anyone's ever been in here with it, you have multiple cameras, you have lights. It's a lot to do to set it up for one interview and then shut it down and then come back every single week. So we've bad shot. We've done two or three episodes at once and it's gone really, really good and it's a lot of fun. However, one of the cons with that has been that it's very tough to get out relevant information um, at the time that that information is relevant. So because we shoot things two or three weeks in advance, we will try in our head to say, okay, this is coming up. So let's get this kind of guess. So it times up perfect. And we've done a pretty good job, I think. I think we have. Um, however, it's not always possible to do that. Um, and so uh, there's been some times where we've had a guest come on. I think of the last Will West episode, for example, um, his, he came on that Monday and we put it out that Wednesday. We can do that. Dalton is the man. Um, he's had the ability to put those out that quick, but we can't do that every time. And sometimes there may be something coming up that I want to talk about and we can't get the guests in. And anybody that's ever worked in an industry where you're reliant upon other people, other clients, other guests, or you've done a podcast or a show, you know that depending on other people is very, very tough because people are busy. And that's a good thing. The good thing about most of the clients, most of the guests that are coming on our podcast is they're busy people because they're doing things, right? They're impacting the community. They're, they're entrepreneurs. They're something of that mindset. And so they're busy people. So coordinating their schedule with coordinating our schedule at a specific time isn't always the easiest. And we've done a really, really good job. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. And so for those instances, there have been times in the past where I've wanted to talk about something and we haven't got to get into it because we couldn't get up the guest lined up. Yeah. And so, for example, uh, today that actually happened, there was a couple guests that we wanted to come in. And this time it was on our end. We had something come up. We had to push our shooting back a couple hours and it didn't line up with our guests. It was and my so end specifically. It was our end. It was our end. <laughs> and so it didn't line up with the guests. Yeah. And so because of that, we weren't going to be able to put out an episode that had that talked about what I kind of want to talk about today. And... I was like, you know, well, we can put out one of our previous episodes because we do have previous episodes or we could try something new. So what I would like, you know, maybe this is once every 10 episodes, once every couple months. I don't know what the schedule looks like for doing this, but every few episodes or so kick back and just have a little conversation um, and just chat it up without a haircut and see how it goes. Like I said, it could go terrible. Dude, I got a great idea on what we call this. What do we call this? Crew cuts. Crew cuts. Okay. Yeah, it's the crew cuts episodes. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Cool work shopping. <laughs> crew cuts. Cool work. You like that? I like that. Okay. You're the main mind, so you'll probably have five we'll things see. by the end of the day. So. Probably. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. But uh, so, like I said, we're going to try it. We still have multiple guests that are lined up to come on next week. We have multiple guest episodes that we've already shot that we can put out at any time. So, we haven't had a shortage of guests, and there never will be, thankfully, because... With this industry, I have a ton of clients and a ton of clients that we can have come on here and talk it up. But I think obviously as we continue to progress and to keep from just having a ton of reoccurring clients being recycled, this could be something to switch it up a little bit. And so I'm excited yeah. about it. And so I know, you know, listen, I'm not pretending to be someone I'm not. I know we're not 
Joe Rogan or Theo Vaughn or one of these guys that can just sit in front of a mic for an hour and a half, two and a, two hours, three hours every week, and people just want to listen to them talk. Yeah. I know that's not that's not me, nor do I want to do that. Yes, if you want to hear yes. me talk that much. You can come to the barbershop and get your hair cut and then what's, we can talk about whatever what's you want. What's the address? What's the address? Takes. But occasionally, once every few episodes, once every couple months, I'd like to do this. So we'll see how it goes. We're going to try it and uh, bear with us. So if you hate it, let us know. If you like it, let us know because that's how we can, you know, feedback is crucial in, in this game and in improving. So what I want to talk about today is fantasy football. Yes. Fantasy football season. I want to talk about some fantasy football guys because it is fantasy football season. And more importantly, we have the Barbers United Fantasy Football League, which any of you guys have seen this video, these pop, this podcast have seen the belt uh, behind us there in the background. And so uh, we're getting ready to start up year three of the Barbers United Fantasy Football League. We have the draft scheduled for this Saturday. And so I wanted to talk about a, the league and the fantasy football as a whole, since this is the time. I've already done a few mock drafts. I've done a few real drafts already. And so I'm pretty excited for this one. You, are, are you in any other leagues? Yes. yes you are? I'm in a couple Dude, other I, leagues. I'm in one other league. Are you? Yeah. Are you? I'm in three. Damn. No, no, no. Two. Two other okay. leagues. I also do a college fantasy football league, Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. You guys are reckless. Yeah, we're reckless. So <laughs> we've got, so technically three, but two NFL ones. Um, no other auction drafts though, which okay. is the difference in this one. So versus the explain others. the auction draft because for me, this is my first time ever doing one. Yeah. You've explained it to me. I kind of understand it. Yeah. But for somebody who's never done an auction draft before, explain, explain what an auction draft is and how it works. So what we do and I'm hold off on that question for one okay, second. Yeah. We'll roll it. So Barbers United Fantasy Football League, what it is. Uh, most of you have seen this league before. If you followed us on our social medias, we put out a draft video last year, which was a lot of fun. The draft night, that's the first year we did a live auction draft and shot it all. Um, and then we did weekly shows, weekly episodes. And the cool thing about that was we were able to do two episodes and we we're able to kind of keep people uh, up to date with what was happening in the league. Now, did a ton of people tune in? Not, not so much. It was mostly us guys in the league, but it was a lot of fun. And so this year, though, what, 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 and I bring this up because what happened a lot the last two years we did this was it started out hot, but as the season went on, it kind of faded down. And that was on my end between having the barbershop, between everything going on, I couldn't keep up with putting the shows out, filming them, editing them, putting them all out. It's a lot of work. At the end of the season, it is. And so I say that all to say this year it's coming on to Dalton and we're going <laughs> to pass the torch to him. He is going to be filming, producing, just like he does for the show, our weekly fantasy football podcast um, that's going to keep you guys up to date with the Barbies United Fantasy Football League. And he's also going to be filming, producing, editing the draft night. So that video, I'm super excited to see. I'm we haven't excited. even shot it yet. We haven't even done it yet, but I'm so excited to see the video just because I can see the vision and the passion. I'm excited and for so draft night. I want to ask you, yeah. first off, because... You're doing all this around the league. You've kind of seen the brainchild of it. I'm yeah. handing it over to you, giving you full reign to make it what we really want it to be, but I can't make it. Um, and so we're passing all that on to you and you're doing all this, but you're also participating. And you I am. love fantasy football. I do. So I want to get your perspective and you. I want you to ask me some questions about the league like you've already done. But for a newcomer into the league, what are you excited about? What questions do you have? What are you thinking? I mean... I played fantasy football for years. Yeah. So it's now I've never done the auction before. That's the only thing that like, I feel like I'm going to be, I don't want to say in over my head, but that's the only thing that I feel like is going to just feel a little new and uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Is just the auction side of it because we start with a budget of what is it? 2000, 200, 200. Okay. Yeah. So we start with a budget of 200 yeah. and then it's like, you know, how much, if I really want Justin Jefferson, how high am I really willing to go to get Justin Jefferson in that first round before it's like, you know, I may, I, cause if you get up to 195 for Justin Jefferson, you got $5 to fill out the rest of that team, which maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that, that part gives me a little bit of anxiety about it, but I think I'll be fine. Yeah. I, I just did a, a snake draft with uh, some of my buddies and I feel like I drafted pretty well. So okay. 
You know, it's 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 playing the money game. Yep. That's going to be new to me for it. It adds a little bit of strategy, which I like. And yeah. it takes away the excuse of I didn't get a certain player because of my draft slot. Right. Yeah. I had pick um, nine. Yeah. A lot of times in a regular snake draft, you're at the mercy of the people in front of you. And basically, you know, how the draft falls kind of dictates what you have to do. You know, if there's a run on running backs, you have to decide, OK, am I going to just pass on all the running backs and just go all wide receivers or what am I going to do? So there's no excuses for why you had to do something just because of your draft spot because everything's available and everything's open. It's on you. So for those of you that have never done an auction draft, what it is, is you start out with a certain amount of money. This is fake money. Um, and so we do $200 and basically you go player by player and you just have a straight up auction. Anybody can bid on anybody. Um, and you have that $200 budget to last you the entire night. So you can take so many different strategies. You can load up on two or three, which we saw someone do last year. He, he drafted four players. He spent his entire $200 budget on four players and then was done. And he just picked up off the waiver wire at the end of the draft. That's a strategy. Or, you know, you can do what most people do and you could do, you know, one or two of your favorite higher end players and then determine, you know, how can you fill out your roster from there, you know, or you can say, you know what, I'm not going to take any other players in the first two rounds. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on anyone. And I'm just going to soak up the middle rounds and just take a bunch of shots on a bunch of guys that are decently priced and go that route. You know what I mean? So it gives you a lot of different options, a lot of different strategies, and you have to be willing to pivot and you have to be ready to pivot at any time. And so, uh, for example, last year during the auction draft, this killed me was that I was running everything, right? I was doing the auctioneer. I was putting the names on the board. I was trying to bid and I had set budgets for my guys going into it. However, what I didn't account for was if I didn't get those guys at that budget, then later on in the draft, I could spend more money on other people. And I wasn't doing that. I was literally letting people go because they went over my budget. And then I got to the end of the draft and I had like $37 left. And I had my roster was full. I couldn't do anything with it. It was wasted. And so then I'm looking back and I'm like, man, my running back one could have been a little better because I could have spent an extra $10 there. My yeah. wide receiver three could have been a little better because I could have spent an extra dollars there. But because in my budget, I, he wasn't worth that much. I wasn't going to spend it. I didn't adjust. So that's why I'm excited for this year um, because hopefully I think I've got it figured out for another guy. He's going to come in and he's going to run the auction for us. The oh, you got somebody. The auctioneer. Yeah. So okay, for cool. the actual draft part, he's going to be doing that. And so then I'll be able to kind of take a step back there and really focus a little bit more on my team. So I'm a little bit excited for that. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. So let me ask, are there starting prices for players? Like, like you've got like the S tier guys, yeah. the Justin yeah, yeah. Jeffersons, Travis. That's a great right? question so, because I was just talking with somebody about that. I, I think there will be, okay. There wasn't last year. And I, I hesitate a little bit because I don't want, I don't want it to be too high, but I wanted to save time. Last year's draft, I think all in total was like four and a half hours. Yeah, it's way too long. 10, four and a half, five hours, which it was a lot of fun, but it's just a long, long time. So I'm hoping we can cut that down closer to the three hour margin. And so if we can get it closer to that, then um, I think that would be a lot better. You want to do so, a 90 second timer for each pick? Like, like that's one you got 90 seconds to see to duke it out. The nice thing about it is the longer it, it's hard to put the 90 second round on it because the first ones are going to go longer than that, no matter what, because right. they're higher, they're higher priced players. Of course. And, but you make up for that at the end, because at the end, you got to think you're going to put someone on the board and there's going to be like two people auctioning. It's going to stop at like $7. It's going to be way less than 90 seconds. You're never going to need it. Yeah. Um, but what I think is the way to do it is rather than having like for specific players, what we could do is the first round, um, the first, let's say the first two or three rounds, we just start it out like, 20 bucks because they're not going to go for less than that. Right. Yeah. And so the problem last year was, you know, like you can see it in the video, but we start the first one who I think it was like Derrick Henry or something. And we start them at a dollar and it's like, okay, Derrick Henry, $2. And it's like, yeah, obviously like you're going to do that, but right. you're obviously going to get beat out. And then it's Derrick Henry, $3, Derrick Henry, five, Derrick Henry, seven, Derrick, 10. Look at that. Let's cut out that 10, 15 seconds for the yeah. first three rounds because it's irrelevant. You're not going to get them for $7. You're just doing that for the semantics of it. But Let's just go ahead and start Derrick Henry at 20 bucks because he's not going for less than that. So yeah. maybe the first two rounds or the first three rounds, we just go ahead and start those guys out at 20. And then from then on, we can start as they go. Maybe it's the first three rounds. We start at 20. The first four to six, we start at 15. See, I think the then, first round of guys, like I think we need to make a tier list almost of like players that are normally drafted, yeah. you know, make 
like, and I'm sure there's something like this that we can find on the internet already, but take that tier list of just all active players that are mm -hmm. prominent in fantasy for like the first 150 guys, right? Uh, and then have like, have like your S tier, right? That's the Supreme players. That's, yeah. you know, your, your Justin Jefferson's, Christian McCaffrey's, Travis Kelsey's, right? Like those guys. And we've got a price for those guys mm -hmm. that that's the starting. So, you know, those guys, those are the first ones we're going to go through, start them at 25. Then you got the A tier guys, and that's probably this year, like your Derrick Henry's, you know, like yeah. the still very, very high, but not like the number one in their position kind of mm -hmm. high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and have like have that one be maybe 20. The B tiers have those start at 15, so on and so forth down the yeah. line. I think if we structure it that way, it'll make it go really smooth. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it just kind of it, it'll make the season interesting because let's say, God forbid, any S tier player has some kind of crazy injury or oh, it's gonna can't happen. play or whatever. It happens yeah, every year. I hope it year. doesn't. But I hope it doesn't. Happen. But yeah, it happens every year, right? Yeah. Um, so let's say something like that happens and the bidding started for Christian McCaffrey at 25 and he got bought for 40. Like there's yeah. a there's That's a little bit of stress happen. there. It happened last year. Someone paid 50 something bucks for Christian McCaffrey. It last happens year. every year. Christian and he gets traded to the 49ers, which was great. Who yeah. are some of your favorite players this year? Let's, well, unless you have any more questions. This year, do you have any more Barbers United fantasy football league questions? Nah, I think I'm good. Think I think good. I'm good. Oh, I'm excited wait, wait, to film I do want to show. I'm, I'm meant to show this. Yeah. Show this. Just came in the other day. Oh. This year's. Oh. Yeah, this year's championship here, hang on. is in here. Let me get a close-up of that. I'm going to go over to the camera. Yes, sir. You zoom in there. Pull this bad boy out here. Gently. You're going to be shot. Have you? Did you feel last? You know, you weren't around for last year. I wasn't year, around so for last year. I want you to feel how heavy this is because you're going to be shot. You're going to think this is just some plastic thing. Look at that bad boy right there. Mm. Ooh. Fire, right? That's pretty awesome. So this year's champion will get to take home this as well as some money, as well as some other things that we'll dive deep in in the actual uh, video. We'll show off some things. You'll get your name on the, the belt that stands up here um, that everyone will see forever. We're going to actually put that. We're going to put last year's winner on there as well. Check this out. Can't let you hold it for too long. Might get attached to it. <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll try she not to get attached it. to it. Wow. That thing's nice, right? It's high quality. Wow. That's a real... This is a real like championship ring. It's a real championship ring. And so it comes with, wow. I need to, I have, this came in as well for last year's winner, but it comes with, uh, I haven't unpackaged it either. Oh, so you could open the stand here. and all that? But yeah, so you can like display it on your counter or whatever. So anyone that ever walks in your house can see, but it's this little yeah. thing right there. And it's Dude. got a little astro turf, a little bit of field. So it just sits right on in there and displays and then it will have, we're going to put this plate on there too for last year's but it will have your name and the league and everything right there. Like the year and stuff, so dude, that's, it'll just sit there. that's freaking see, cool. The world see. Yeah, we go all out, man. This is a big deal and it's a whole lot of fun. So uh, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for you to get to see it, see how you do. And uh, I'm excited to see the what you can do with the show. We've got a meeting here. I say it's a meeting. You and me are going to sit down for a few minutes after the episode here and hammer out some of the details for the vision of what we're going to do this year. But uh, yeah. I'm excited to see it in your hands, the professionals, which you can, uh, which you can turn this thing into because it's been a lot of fun. I mean, what do you, let me ask you this before we move on to fantasy football as a whole. What do you think you've seen the video from last year, the yeah. auction, the night you've seen some of the weekly shows that we did. Uh, what are your thoughts on it as a whole um, that what we've been doing and uh, how you can kind of improve it just off the top? I mean, I thought y'all did a pretty good job last year. I think, um, the big thing that I'm going to do from last year to this year is just kind of like trim the fat on it, make it yeah. really engaging, really clippable. Um, and really just an overall recap, something that can kind of interest more people into this like auction side of fantasy football. And I don't know, have you ever seen the show, the league? Yes. The league on, on Hulu, right? Yes. Um, I never watched like sat down and watched like the seasons or things like that, but I've seen clips and I, I know what it is. Yeah. Okay. So like almost making it something like that, not like a reality TV show about it. Right. But I think um, having like our weekly kind of round table, whatever we decided to call it, where we go over the week and we go mm -hmm. over, you know, who are some of the impact players, yep. who are some of the busts of the week, you know, what team's kind of on thin ice, what team is firing on all cylinders, right? Things like that. Whenever we do our, our, our recap for each one, having, having segments that are pretty, you know, to the point, um, trimming the fat on that kind of stuff and just making an engaging kind of program for that. I think something that would be really cool for that is to have 
uh, somebody who's in the league just FaceTime in or call in or, yeah. you know, something for that and yeah. ask them questions about their team, what's yeah. going on, yeah. that kind of stuff, and have like a weekly team spotlight. Yeah, definitely. I think I think something like that to where it's not just about, you know, you and me doing the, the recap every week, mm-hmm. but getting to see more of those personalities that are in yep. the league 100%. beyond just draft. Because we have time. some personalities. Oh, yeah. We have some Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, and that's what the goal was. That's what we tried to do last year. Like I said, we weren't able to do it to the degree that I wanted to do it. And so that's why I'm excited for that. We set it up in the shop here and it was like it was similar to the podcast where it's like it's it's tough to get people. They have a busy schedule. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, you know, last year we did a pretty good job of at least having one of the guys being able to show up. You know what I mean? And so that, that makes it a lot more fun. And, and like you said, let these let the people that are watching get a little bit of insight on these guys. They're not just team names. They can actually put a face to those names. I think that's important, but uh, let's talk fantasy football as a whole okay. a little bit here and uh, give me some guys that you're, maybe you're interested in first and then maybe we'll, well hang on now, hang on now, hang on now. What are you trying to game you plan know against what I'm me trying here? To do right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had, dude, I had a client do this. He was, he was literally sitting in the chair. We're getting, I'm giving him a haircut and he's going to play in the league. It's going to be his first year. Um, we have a lot of the guys from last year coming back. Uh, well, I say a lot, probably about half. I wanted to keep about half of them, half of them, they didn't deserve to stay in, so kick them out. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but half of them about come back. So this is a new client coming in, and yeah, he's sitting here trying to get advice. Like you know, hey, who, who are some guys you like this year? Who are some sleepers? And it's like, dude, I can't give you that. Yeah, you know? so what? It's like, I'll give you a few, but I can't give you all of them. So you're not gonna give us your your deepest I'll, darkest secrets I'll give here, you, but give us some, you know, give us something. What I'll give you, for? I'll give you two. All right. That and the these reason are, these are guys you're high on, or guys you're these low are on? these are guys that I'm I'm high on. Okay. Um, that are not Chiefs. Yeah. Hold as, up. Let me get my phone out. Let me write this. Down. As a as a Chiefs fan, I mean, you'll be able to remember them pretty easily. As a as a Chiefs fan, obviously, I'm pretty high on number fifteen. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. I think I think you'd be a fool to not want to have Patrick Mahomes be your fantasy quarterback. But there's also guys that play. Hypothetically, for the Chiefs how much would you spend on him in auction? Oh, dude! If Patrick Mahomes, let's if Patrick Mahomes is going to be an S tier guy, you're in a league and you have a two hundred dollar budget. Hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, hypothetically you have a budget. How much would you spend on Patrick he's, Mahomes? He's an S tier guy. He'd probably be, you know, let's say the the fifth kind of guy that we go over, because uh, he's probably number one fantasy projected quarterback. So he'd start at twenty five. You know, I I probably put him in the eighties. I'd probably put him in the eighties. Like if I have to get Patrick Mahomes, I'll I'll, I'll show any price he wouldn't spend for Patrick. Would spend I'm not. 100? I wouldn't spend a hundred on Patrick. I'm not spending half the budget on the quarterback because ultimately quarterback play in fantasy football. Is it's important, but it's not as important as it is on the actual field. Right. Right. Like and it is a 12 man league. Oh, it's a 12 man. 12 man. Oh, I thought it was 10. Okay. That 12. changes everything. Yeah. He might be like 70s then for that. Cause like 12 man league, like you got to get that benefiting guys. you though, because, or I could see it where maybe you would spend a little bit more on Patrick Mahomes though, because then there's a little bit, there's a couple less starting quarterbacks out on the waiver wire every week, you know? So yeah. I mean, you can defend it a little bit. Well, Mahomes is always going to put up numbers. I'll tell you this, last stuff. year Mahomes went for about 50. But there was no <laughs> avid Chiefs fans. Now, the guy that did draft him drafted him and Tyreek Hill. Got the little... Oh, but he, that's but, a... But Tyreek Hill wasn't even on the team anymore. Right, yeah, he was on the Dolphins. To be honest, I don't think the guy knew that. I think the guy that drafted him... Oh, he thought him he was... Even, oh, He just no. heard Tyreek Hill and Mahomes. He was, he was awesome. I love that. I love him to death. He's an awesome client of mine. Um, he did me a huge solid though playing the league last year because it was like the day of the league. I had a guy, I had the guy the night before last se- last season, and God forbid this doesn't happen again. The day before the draft, I had a guy bail, and I had to spend like that night and that morning. I was like, okay, every client that comes in, I'm gonna add, like if they're even a, a possibility. And uh, everyone that came in was pretty much a a wash. No one really oh. was. No one. I don't even remember who the clients were, but none of them were really. A, did I even want in the league necessarily? Like they probably didn't even care and B, weren't interested. So I had struck out and I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was kind of winging it. And all of a sudden, um, he had reached out about something completely different. Um, he had texted me and I was just like, dude, random shot in the dark. Any shot, you're free tonight and would be willing to, to jump in this league. And he did. And so he was, he, he saved our butts on that one. But, uh, is he playing again this year? He's not. He's I don't, not. I don't know. He's not. He's not. Uh, so. No worries. Not well. No big deal. Um, so, okay, that's one. Mahomes. Yeah. You so, know Mahomes. Yeah, so Mahomes. I, and number two is Kelsey. Obviously, you can yeah. skip this second. Obviously. On, give us some. Obviously, number, my highest number one and two. Now, my sleeper picks, though. The two sleepers I'll give you. One of them 
You're a Steelers fan. Yep. I know you're going to like this yep. one because I'm sure anybody who's watched any video on this channel before has seen that Steelers flag in the mirror. Yes, sir. Or the TJ Watt autograph picture right or there, the, too. Yeah. the T Oh, I didn't realize it's autographed. Autograph, it is, isn't it? Probably wow. shouldn't have said that. No, so that's I might break in and take it. That's impressive. Klein got that for me. That's cool. Yo. George Pickens. Mm. George Pickens mm. is a sleeper guy that I'm high on this year mm. because I think Kenny Pickett is going to take a good step forward. Mm. I like Kenny Pickett. Do you? I do. I do like Kenny Pickett. Now, I do like to also kind of make fun of Kenny Pickett. Why? Because he it's threw he threw a lot of interceptions as a rookie, which, you know. He's a rookie. Is, okay. He's what about, a rookie. What about your guy, Peyton Manning? Peyton, Man that's Peyton Manning throws a lot of interceptions. And that's the year. Didn't he set the record for the most interceptions? I think he did, I think actually. He did. I think he did. But, so. Had that's, a great career. Hey, Peyton Manning probably got made fun of a ton. I was like he two years did. old whenever he was a rookie <laughs> in the NFL. But, uh, so I, I would make fun of Kenny Pickett a little bit. I'd call him Kenny. I throw it. You pick it. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah. But, so, anyways. Anyways, I'm high on George Pickens. And uh, I actually ended up taking him. Uh, in the snake draft that I'm in with uh, with my other friends. Okay. And I have a buddy named Matt in that draft who's a big time Steelers fan too. And I got a pretty nasty message from him after I drafted George Pickens. To top it all off, George Pickens went to Georgia. He did. I am a Tennessee Vol. You and are. so to get back at me for that, I got ripped in the group chat talking about Dalton's a Georgia fan. And uh, there's nothing I can do to defend myself because I literally drafted George Pickens. <sighs> But I will say, George Pickens is the son of legendary Tennessee wide receiver, Carl Pickens. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. So that's my that's my excuse. So number one is George Pickens. I think he's going to take a big step forward. Yeah. So, uh, big thing I've heard is him and Kenny Pickett are, are like this. And so that's always good. That's what you want to hear. Clips are viral. He is insane. In Dude, yeah. Awesome. Have you seen, they call him NFL Have young I seen, boy. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've seen him. And if it has to do with Pickens, yes. It has to do with the Steelers, I've seen I love that clip of, of, of Pickens at Georgia fighting the Georgia Tech corner. Mm, I, love love I love that one. I love that one. It's like just the the unbridled rage yeah. that he got. It wasn't even a bad hold. The, yeah. the DB barely holding them, but he just wasn't having yeah. any part. You of know, it. Mike Tomlin love that. That's probably the moment Mike Tomlin was like, "We're drafting that guy." Yeah, he's just kind of got. He's not a pretty boy. He's not. You know, he's gonna get in there. He's gonna block. He's gonna hit some boys. You see him. He's everyone's like always oh, offensive pass interference holding blah blah. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but either way, the physicality. Love to see it. Yeah. yeah. Like Heinz Ward, dude. That's like one of my favorite players of all time. Him and Trevor Mala were tied. And uh, I mean, Heinz Ward will just lay somebody out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you could be pump return, Heinz Ward just go lay him out. You know, you love to see that from your receiver. You know what I mean? You're not gonna yeah. see that from Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And and those guys are amazing. I'm gonna say George Pickens is better than them because yeah. he's willing to hit somebody, but I personally, as a Pittsburgh Steeler, you love to see that. Yeah. Well, and it matches the identity of the Steelers. Like when you think of the Steelers, you think of like some gritty dudes. And he fits that. I want to ask you, because you brought up the Georgia and the bias, do you have a hard time separating bias like that, whether it's college or it's like NFL? So, like, for example, do you refrain from drafting Chargers players or refrain from drafting Broncos players because they're in your division you hate them? Or are you able to separate that from fantasy? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. No, I, I, don't, I don't refrain from picking Chargers players. Um, just because they play for the Chargers. Mm -hmm. Now, I do refrain from picking Broncos players sometimes because the Broncos suck. <laughs> I do refrain from picking Raiders except for Devontae Adams and Jacobs because the Raiders suck. Nothing to do with the fact they're in your division. Nothing to do with the fact. I mean, now I watch them more because the Chiefs play them twice a year and they look like garbage until they play the Chiefs and they give us like their best game of the year and still lose. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so in the NFL, not as much bias. Now, if I were to play fantasy for college, dude, I'm going to be super biased. See, for me, and this is why I bring this up, it's the complete opposite. Okay. I do better at college fantasy. I think I was in the championship two years. I've played three years. I was, the first two years, I was in the championship and lost both. And last year, I made the playoffs and lost in the first round. But I And I've not been in the NFL playoffs. I've not been in an NFL fantasy championship in a long time. Really? And I've made the playoffs like maybe twice in the last three or four years, being in two or three year, leagues every year. The problem is I'm biased and I cannot help it. There are players I like and there are players I do not like. And there are teams that I like and teams I do not like. And I do not pick those players no matter what. And so that comes back to hurt me. In college, just because you don't like them, not because, they, not nothing because they're bad. Fantasy. Nothing to do with fantasy. Oh, nothing man. To do with Come on now. Bad. I can't. It's just who I am. You're better than that. Come I'm on not. now. And that's what kills me every year. You're going to see it this year. So like, would Listen. you draft Lamar Jackson? No. 
dude, that's just that's just a mistake. Go. Yep. He could oh. be in the eighth round. I'm not drafting. Oh my god. Okay, that might be a stretch. I may draft him and then trade him. That might be what oh I. Oh my do. god. But like, I cannot tell you the last time I had a Browns player, if ever, on my fantasy roster. What? Yeah. I mean, I do get that to an extent because the Browns. No, but I like so. I wouldn't draft like when Odell was there. I never had him. Amari Cooper never had him. Jarvis Jones or Landry. Landry, Landry yeah, Jones. Juice. Yeah, never had him. Um. And I loved Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma. Oh, just a spicy take. Oh, I love Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma. That made my stomach I could turn. Not draft him as a Brown. Oh, Nick Chubb t- can draft. Him. Kareem Hunt can draft. Him. Yeah, Kareem Hunt. There's a lot of reasons not to draft. Amari Kareem Cooper Hunt. now can't draft. Him. None of them. Elijah Moore could draft. Him. Deshaun Watson can't draft. Him. But also for the Bengals, never had Jamar Chase on a fantasy roster. Never had Joe Burrow. Never had T Higgins. Never had Tyler Eifert. So you're telling never me, had Joe Mixon. None of them. So you're telling me now, I, if if Jamar Chase is available and people aren't biting at him at, well, let's imagine he's in the twenty dollar spot, right? Starting at twenty dollars, <laughs> somebody bids twenty one for him, and then there's a moment of silence. You're yes. not going to bid twenty two yes, on Jamar yes, Chase, I but I will. So yes, okay. first off, yes, I would I would take Jamar Chase. I would play Jamar at that level. To me, that's a different stratosphere, though. I mean, that's like you're talking about top three of fantasy football. That's a different level. Yeah. But I also, like, if I had the number one pick, I probably wouldn't take him over Justin Jefferson because Justin Jefferson isn't a bank. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if well, it yeah. comes down to that. So that's where it's like in the middle rounds, it's a whole lot easier because you're not, you may be getting a really good player, but there's people comparable versus like, okay, if I have the third pick in the draft and J- Justin Jefferson's gone and let's say, or, which I would probably take him over Tyreek Hill. Let's say I have the second pick and him and Justin Jefferson are the clear <laughs> One, two are the receivers. And I really want a receiver. Yeah, I'm going to take Jamar Chase. But that's also because he is in the top of the top of the top. But yeah. like T. Higgins, T. Higgins will probably have to fall in like a snake draft. So like the sixth or seventh round for me to take it because I just damn. I don't want to cheer for the Bengals ever. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I'm sitting down and I'm like, I want the Bengals to score a touchdown. I don't. I, I do get that. I now, do get that. because There having, have been times and I'm a little partial because I grew up with my Americans. I still am my Okay. But I've always been a Miami Hurricanes fan. My dad or my my stepdad pops. He's from yeah, he's from Miami, Homestead, Florida. And so uh, I'm a little partial to the Ravens because they had so many Hurricanes on that defense. And even though the Steelers and the Ravens were battling, I always had a small little bit of love for their defense. Offense, no way. But their defense, I always loved Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, those kind of guys because they yeah. were monsters. And as much as I hated playing them, respect them. Yeah. So the Ravens are the only team that in the division where I will say I don't, I'm not going to root for them, but I have a little bit of respect. I don't have much respect for the Bengals and the Browns. Now the Bengals of the last couple of years are char- starting to change that so that I could yeah. change. But growing up, the Bengals and Browns, no respect whatsoever. Ravens at least have my respect. So you're not a big Ocho Cinco guy. Not a big Ocho Cinco guy. Um, so I, have, I do, I will say the one player within those three teams that I have had occasionally is J.K. Dobbins. I've had a couple shares of him. And uh, I actually just this year for the first time ever got a share of Mark Andrews. Um, and so uh, I'm excited to see I me. Mean, he's a monster. So yeah. the Ravens are the one team I, I let it go a little bit for depending. But even then, I'm really not seeking it out. I've never drafted one of those guys. They've always been traded to me through different things and it just wasn't a good deal. So, But I have a, tr- I have a struggle with bias. Like you're going to see. So there's certain, And then there's certain players that come into the NFL that I like. It has nothing to do with teams. Like for example, I'll say this one because everyone knows this that's going to be here on the draft night, Terry McLaurin. Somebody is going to bid high on Terry McLaurin even though they don't want him at all. Just so I don't get him. Just, just, to, get just to drive up the price, which is what they did last year. One of the guys that drafted four guys, his fourth guy, he drafted Terry McLaurin. Okay, and he so. literally texted me after the draft and said, let's make a trick. And he had me because it was like, okay, Jonas is going to get like, well, we did another draft the other day, our other one, and somebody else drafted Terry McLaurin. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And literally the draft ended. It's like, all right, let's make a trade. And now I'm going to have to make a trade for Terry McLaurin because I love Terry McLaurin. You just got to have Terry on your team. Got to have Terry McLaurin. So that's kind of how I feel about Travis Kelsey. No, but because because Travis Kelsey's on your team. So I like, mean, yeah. like, okay, I like see George what you're Pickens, saying. Like George Pickens, of course, I love George Pickens. Right. But, Terry Off McLaurin, my team. Terry McLaurin is a guy who I just absolutely love and I'm going to go out and get him no matter what. So it's going to disgust me to say this. That's how I feel about Devontae Adams. Yeah. Okay. But this started back whenever he was a Packer. Uh-huh. Because the, the one championship I've ever won in fantasy football, 
I won because it was Devonte Adams. I think either his last year as a Packer or his second to last year as a Packer. I don't remember off the top of my head. It was one of those two years, and he was balling. It was it was thirty five points plus every week. Like he was a guaranteed thirty every week, and so I had no fear going into the championship. Yeah, I had I had gotten him uh, in a trade because somebody had Christian McCaffrey and Devonte Adams, and I was like, look, I'll give you Alvin Kamara. And like two other wide receivers and I'll take Christian McCaffrey off your team because he's not going to play the rest of the season Yeah, and give you something in return. So you don't have to just go to waivers. I was like, but I want Devante. Mm. And so I got him out of that. I cut Christian McCaffrey as That's soon as right. I got him. As soon as you got him. And then, and then had Devante Adams and Travis Kelsey as my wide receiver one and my tight end one. And I just ran through the, the competition. You may have said this. Was that when, was Devante Adams a Packer at that point? Though, he was or? still a Packer okay. at that point. So it was different. But I've tried to get Devante Adams every year since. Really? Even, That's even as a Raider, as I, much as it disgusts me. That's a lot of times how it happens for me because what happens is I, so I'm, I don't know what you do as far as watching them. I do Sunday ticket. I've been hooked on it for years. I, I can't go back. I might just have to come over every weekend you, this year. You're more than welcome to. Um, I'm addicted to it. So I can watch any single game, all games at all times. And okay. so I follow my players mostly. Um, and so what normally happens is I draft a guy one year who, you know, I may be a little bit intrigued by, I may kind of like him a little bit, but don't have much experience with him. And then he takes off and has a great year and I have fun watching him. He's a fun player. That's what happened with Lauren. And all of a sudden from that point on, that's my guy and I'm getting him every year. Right. That yeah. happened with Thielen. Um, the first year I, Interesting. I had Adam Thielen was 20, like 18. He was putting up monstrous numbers, having a great season, so much fun to watch. And uh, I, at that point, liked him more than even Stephon Diggs. And Whoa. Uh, well, what, at that point, too, Thielen was like the number one wide receiver that season for the majority of the season. So that was a lot of fun. Fun season, electric. All of a sudden, it was like, boom, that's my guy. Next couple of years, I went out and got him. Now, eventually, it just kind of faded out. He wasn't as good. I don't go after him every single year now. I may or may not be going after him this year. Wink, wink. But I haven't had him for the last couple of seasons, honestly. But yeah. uh, that was an instance. And the same thing with Terry McLaurin, where it was like, I drafted him as a rookie. Um, I, I don't even know if I drafted him or if I just picked him up off the waiver wire. But he, make, what I love about Terry McLaurin, and I like a lot of guys like this, are guys that can just make spectacular plays. I mean, it's a little bit of George Pickens, where it's like, yeah, he may not get all the targets. He may not be this great, polished wide receiver, but you can watch him on any Sunday, and there's going to be two or three plays he makes where you're like, man, he yep. might be the only player in the NFL to make that play. You know what I mean? And yep. that's where it was like, Washington's offense has been terrible. Washington's a team has not been very good. He hasn't had good quarterback play. So he's really not a great fantasy producer. I've yeah. overpaid for him every year. Um, however, there will be games. I think back to the Packers game last year where he's got Jair Alexander, who's probably the best corner in the league, um, guarding him. And he is just, I mean, he is running these crisp routes and he's making these, beautiful catches and just cooking up and i mean it was like heineke's just got his eyes closed just throwing it up to him and he's just kind of come down with it and you just see that and you're just like i, I love that you yeah. know and it may only happen two or three times he may lose me my fantasy week but i want to root for that guy you know and so that's kind of how it happened for me and so i love it man i'm, I'm excited for this year we've probably talked forever what's what's the time got, looking like Where we, we, right we got about 10 minutes left 10 minutes left yeah. i do have one more sleeper pick for you okay madison the, the running in Madison, yeah. For the the, the for running Vikings. back for the Vikings. Okay. Dalvin Cook is gone. Yep. When Dalvin Cook got hurt last season, mm -hmm. Madison took over a lot of those carries and looked good. And I think now they've got another. They've got a whole training camp with him to be worked into a lot more <laughs> of these packages to be the starting guy to be their like three down running back. I think he's going to get a lot of touches. He runs hard. He's a fun guy to watch. Like he's an ideal candidate to be a running back one or two. Yeah. Like I, I think, and not a lot of people talk about him. Mm -hmm. Like the big thing people are talking about this year is Nick Chubb because he's not having to split touches. That's the exact situation as Alexander Madison. Yeah. Another guy on that team, Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison. I, I think of the rookie wide receivers. I'm excited to see him because I don't think he's the most talented of all those guys, but he's got the, he's walking on the best opportunity without him feeling on. Yeah. He could get a lot of touches. He can be a that wide receiver too there yeah, real quick. He really could. And him. I think he's, I think he's ready to handle that workload too. I don't think he's going to need too much time, you know, cause he's not one of these guys that's just coming in with blazing speed or something like your, 
like Jalen like Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt, you know. Yeah. And so that's, go on that I took Jalen Hyatt with my seventh round pick in our snake draft, dude. It was not seventh, not seventh. In my last, my last pick. Okay. It was okay. my I was very last walk pick. Out. I was yeah, about to walk out. I was thinking, I thought NFL draft and I was, but no, I took Jalen Hyatt with my very last pick because I was like, dude, I don't. Take a chance. The, yeah, the, yeah. And I do it every year. When Jawan Jennings got drafted, yeah. I took Jawan Jennings with my last pick. Mm-hmm. When, when Marquez Callaway went into the league, I took him with my last pick. Yeah. That was actually a really good one. He, he, he balled out for yeah. the Saints that year. Um, but I do it every year. Like I've had Palmer on my team. You know, I try to get at least one vol yeah. in a draft every yeah. year. Uh, the one time it didn't happen was when Alvin Kamara was a rookie. Uh oh. And I was the biggest Alvin Kamara fan when he was at Tennessee. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was my guy. And he got taken with whatever pick it was right before me in that year. So I didn't get, I didn't get my rookie vol that year, but Mm -mm. every year since then I've had a rookie vol on my team. Yeah. And some years they do great. Josh Palmer last season, or we wasn't a rookie last year, but I had him for a little bit. Josh Palmer last season had some good weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they always they always sneakily get me a, a good game here or there. I'm excited to see their rookie receiver do the Chargers, which I know you hate them, but Quentin Johnson. Uh, yeah. Just Keenan Allen and Mike Williams get hurt every single year. Yeah. Every year. It's going to be it's gonna be Johnson and Palmer. I want to see Johnson. I don't know about Palmer. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully. For you. Hey, for they're, hey, man, they're not beating the Chiefs, so I'm yeah. not worried about it. I'm not worried about back it. Back to back? My... Hey, what do you think of that Travis Kelsey fight in the, in the offseason? I mean, it happens. I like it. I do, too. I think Especially he's fired because you don't want to see... I think a tendency for a lot of Super Bowl teams is to get complacent, you know? Yeah. And to see him and out there fired up and fighting from. in a practice means that he still cares. Yeah. He's not just like sitting on the sidelines watching like, hey, it's just, this doesn't matter. It's fall camp. I got he's two like, rings. I'm yeah. on the Mount Rushmore yeah. tight ends already. This, nah, he's fired every, up about Every rep matters. So I love it, my man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you doing this with me. What do you think? How'd you think? It went? I think this is fun. I think we'll do, we'll do a lot more of these. Yeah. We'll sneak yeah. some stuff like this. It's not going to be like everyday thing. Don't no. worry, guys. We're going to go back to our original format. Um, and if you hate it, let us know. If you like it, let us know either way. Um, but I had fun. And I think that four times where it's a relevant topic, something that's going on, and we don't necessarily have a guest lined up that can that we feel equipped to talk about it with or it falls through, um, I think this is a good option to have in our back pocket. You yeah, know, absolutely. Like back and just having a good time. So, yeah. guys, thank you guys for watching and listening. Um, if you are still watching to this and if you love fantasy football, then tune in to our shop page. Um, it'll be on the same YouTube, Barbers United Barbershop. It's going to be on this same account. Um, it will be separate. So we'll still do the weekly cutting up podcast. That's not going to replace it. There will be every Wednesday, 8 a.m., just like always. There will still be the cutting up episodes. Um, but then there will be another day in the week, I think Tuesday, but we haven't finalized that. We're going to finalize that here in the next couple minutes. Um, there will be an episode coming out to recap the week, talk about it, and then stay tuned for the auction draft night video. That is going to be awesome. If it is even, I loved last year's video and I already know with Dalton taking control, it is going to be a hundred times better. And if it's even 10 times better than last year's, then boy, is that going to be something you're not going to want to miss. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching, like, share, subscribe. We will see you next week with a guest and we're out. Peace out.